Hi, I'm Therese Swenson, and I'm here at the Siskiyou Media Council TV Studios. We're located at 616 South Weed Boulevard, and we have Channel 15 in Mount Shasta, MCTV 15, and in Wairika Channel 4. But you can find us on the web. So our web address is siskiyoumediacouncil.org, and the public access station is here for you to be able to stay up with your local civic community meetings, uh, city council planning, board of supervisors, all of those meetings, uh, part of our studio keeps that on the air. Um, but I'd like to invite you to get involved. We need more producers. We need people that have content and interesting things they want to share. And I think you might have some photos. If you're a good photographer, you could put them in a chain and, and tell, share that with people. Um, I had a friend, Vicki, that went to Alaska. She had excellent photographs all along the way. Just think of all the shut-ins that you could share that with. And even though people don't watch Channel 15, people can go to the web and see all of our archived shows that have been recorded. Now, in terms of taking pictures, I started at the Shasta County line and I took pictures of all the local restaurants that you might see. And my thinking was you may have GPS and you may have a road of how to get there, but I wanted to show you what the outside of each of these local restaurants or food sources might be. So my show is called Places to Go and it's in the archives. But I wanna ask you if you're woke, I want you to get involved with free speech. And uh, there's a free speech TV that's on public broadcasting. And PBS is different than public access. So we're kind of just locals getting all the news out to you. Uh, but we all should be looking at getting our news from more than one source. Um, so I'd like for you to just share the idea of watching TV. Maybe have, have friends that are vaccinated that you want to sit around and watch free speech. Uh, you could call up some old shows and watch them. Now, I also like to encourage people to watch uh, Rogue Valley Television, where I also have been involved for 10 years up in Southern Oregon University. So if you're interested to see what's going on at Rogue Valley, they have many more producers. Thank you for putting that up. John just put up the programming block. Now the Rogue Valley Television has a programming block where there's certain times of the day where you can watch uh, children's shows. I think they do some sort of faith and spirituality on the weekends. They have children's programs in the morning. If people want to sleep in late, they can let their kids watch some good shows. Well-being and lifestyle. They have education. Um, I know that Kamud has a cooking class, and that is really fun. She makes wonderful things and shares with you, and her husband does uh, me meditation. So they have yoga classes. They have the girls that do the two girls. What are their names, Carol? They do sisters on the phone or something. They, they get together in two women, but they have arts and culture. They have artists on your doorstep where they actually go into studios and film. Uh, we could really like to have uh, some cameras here around the county go out and film uh, different art studios. So if you'd like to get involved, if you're an artist and you want to show your wares, come get involved in public access and let us loan you a camera to go out and do an event. Uh, so public access, which is in Rogue Valley Television, uh, rvtv.sou.edu, and that's in Southern Oregon, or you can watch public access here in Northern California. So I like to invite people to get involved and check out public access. So also I always tell people it's so important to get your local paper. Um, the thing about the local paper, in the old days, people got the paper because they were looking for a job or a car or a new house to rent. But nowadays people think they can find everything on social media. And so they look things up. 
But nowadays with algorithms, you end up getting whatever you searched, you end up getting more of the same kind of information. You don't really get a diverse uh, exposure to how news is being reported. Uh, also, I like to remind you, people throw away the TV guide and I want to remind you, it has a crossword in it. So not only does the paper have uh, the local events and calendars of things that are coming up, but it also has uh, a crossword for those of you that are trying to keep your mind sharp. And you don't have to fill in all the blanks. You can just read through the questions and see how many you get right. Uh, it's good for mind stimulation. But back to the newspaper, the reason I think it's so important is that we have um, an opportunity to have a voice. There's also letters to the editor, so you can respond to the headlines that you see, and you can educate people about something that you think might be misinformation. But one of the things that happened this week, the paper came out and it said, McLeod Fiesta is this weekend. Oh, golly gee willikers, it wasn't this weekend, it's the upcoming weekend. So um, it got people to go over to McLeod, which is not a bad thing. It's a fun place to visit. There's, of course, a golf course, and there's wonderful uh, rivers and uh, lakes if you go out past McLeod. Oh, and if you want a surprise breakfast early on a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or Saturday, check ahead. But the Bartle Cafe has the most wonderful potato latkes. So if you're in McLeod and you want to go a little farther, it's a good 30 minutes past McLeod, out towards Bernie, is the Bartle Lodge, and they have the most delicious. But anyway, the Lumberjack Fiesta is coming up next week. This show will be old, but at least you'll know uh, that McLeod's a great place to visit. Uh, the Fiesta, which is coming up on the 24th, I was kind of trying to get people to send postcards and invite people to come to the Fiesta, because there'll be a lot of loggers there showing you how they cut they take a tree that's been cut and they go along and they show you how thick they can wield that big chainsaw and they can cut little rounds. They can teach you how to wield an ax. If you're a person that has a wood stove, you need to know how to make kindling and keep your hands out of it. So I was uh, having a lot of fun making postcards for the Lumberjack Festival and uh, I was hoping people would invite their friends. I want people to post a card. I want you to write to people. I think every single one of us goes to our mailbox, mostly just to get bills. And I want to remind you that each of us who goes to our mailbox loves to have a surprise. Usually it's your birthday, you expect a card or Christmas, but you know a postcard's just uh, 35 cents might go up. Postage is going to be going up soon. Uh, but I just think you ought to consider taking time out to take an envelope and send somebody a note just because we all like to get mail. In the old days, people wrote a letter and they told about, instead of a text or a picture, they would tell where they were and they would explain things in such a, a creative way. You could almost feel like you were there or remember a summer or something. So let me encourage you to get your local paper. We have a local paper that's the Siskiyou Daily News in Wairika. And then we also have the Mount Shasta Herald, the Weed Press, the Dunsmere News, and that is South County. So Siskiyou Daily News is usually some of the news events that take place up in Wairika, which what's coming up in Wairika? Back to basics. That is gonna be the uh, theme for the fair this summer. Uh, we will have the fair and there will be social distancing and being outdoors. I want to invite you to come to the fair. It's August 11th through the 15th. So that's usually Wednesday evening. Everybody's setting up and getting the animals ready for, for auction. And then um, the 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th, Thursday through Sunday will be all of the uh, demonstrations and workshops. And I think they have music events and like you might want to go to the quilting building and see the wonderful quilts or photography. They also have displays of different things. There's a lot of horticulturists, so there's a, so you may have questions about what's growing in your yard. It's a good place to go in and look at the different flowers and look at all the different plants and some of the different vegetables. And you may decide next year that you might want to grow spaghetti squash or something that you hadn't thought to grow before because you see it at the county fair. So come to the county fair August 11th through the 15th and um, 
Back to basics is the theme. So it'll be interesting to see how they weave that into all the booths. And then, of course, there'll be demonstrations for us. Siskiyou Media Council, we will be there to answer your questions. And if you have any questions about getting involved, please come by our booth at the Siskiyou County Fair. And I can't remember the building we're in. John, what's the building we're in? Anyway, that's my invitation to the county fair. So I want to invite you to that. It'll be coming up and it'll be in the papers this week. <clears throat> now, the other thing I wanted to talk to you about is the title of my show today is Burned Out. So it's been a year now that we've all been dealing with COVID and having to wear masks and uh, be sequestered and uh, not be able to be in groups. And so now things kind of broke open this summer and people got to get together and be with family. And um, I know that there's still um, people that are uh, resistant to getting the vaccine. I understand that people have, you know, the freedom we have is to get a vaccine or not get a vaccine. And that's all good. I'm kind of thinking though, because it's such a strong divide, there's such a alternate reality about the science. I just want to talk about whether or not we should be considering, instead of disagreeing about it, let's have the flight attendants that don't want to be vaccinated, the pilots that don't want to be vaccinated, the clients that don't want to be vaccinated, customers or what do you call people that fly. Anyway, um, or maybe even on buses or trains. If we're going to have such a huge divide, maybe the planes that leave on the 11 o'clock hour should be people that are vaccinated and don't have been wearing masks. And maybe the planes that leave on the half hour could be people that don't want to wear masks and they want herd immunity and they, they have health reasons for not being vaccinated. I mean, I do understand that. What I worry about is if we require that people show proof of vaccine, we now know that so many people have held up their card and said, here's my card. Somebody could take that and make a a counterfeit one. So I worry about counterfeit. I'd much rather just accept that we have an alternate reality and let's put the people that believe they can be in peace and not be asked to wear a mask and they can be with all the people that aren't wearing masks or vaccinated. And the people that are being careful and wearing masks, we can be kept um, safe, we can feel safe. So I want people to have the freedom to do either. So I want us to consider the first half of the train is vaccinated, put the food services in the middle and have the rest of the train be unmasked. And then you don't have people sitting next to each other being concerned that they're not wearing their mask. Just let it be okay. So I'm looking at ways to make buses and trains and planes and let's just I think it's important to be vaccinated, but not everybody agrees with me. So I want to allow them to have their own space and let's let all the people that want to believe in herd immunity. So one of the things that Jake, I, or Jake, my son's name, uh, John is my tech today. John, I had something about COVID that I gave you. Oh, I love when that happens. When you have something green and you're up against a green screen, it changes what it looks like. I have to remember to hold things up. So this was COVID-19 vaccine. And on that brochure, it had a phone number, John. Um, if people are curious, it's really only open weekdays from 8 to 8. But the operators do speak English and they can provide you um, answers about COVID, like just anything you want to know, whether or not there's testing, if you feel you've been um, maybe infected, you've maybe been somewhere. Oh, that reminds me, I want to share something. In Reading, they did a study. And the reason I want to hold this up, John, if I can get a clear screen, uh, if I can roll it around. So this is Arm and & Hammer. And this is a simply saline nasal you know, I know a lot of people do for allergies. They have a squishy water that goes in and gets on the back of your throat. And um, people have neti pots. But what you need to know is they did a study in Reading that saline will take down the viral shedding. That's the word. When you're in a room and there's an aerosol a virus, like somebody has COVID and they're breathing, and it kind of goes out in the air. You've probably seen illustrations of that. That viral shedding you inhale, either through your nose or your mouth. Well, what they found is they did a study in Reading that normal saline will take down some of those sh viral shedding particles. And so you want to consider doing a saline flush. Let's say you went to the mall or you went somewhere and you may have taken off your mask 
it's just something you can do is gargle with salt water and flush your nose. The reason I'm, I don't know if I'm allowed to promote something because I don't really believe in promoting things, but I want you to know that I had a good experience because this just has a fine mist and then you blow your nose. And so it wasn't gaggy. Thought I'd share that with you. It's called um, Arm & Hammer Simply Saline. And since we were going to have another year of this uh, virus morphing and changing and coming up with different variants, I can't remember the name. What's that variant word? Anyway... Delta. Say again? Delta variant. Delta is the new one, but I guess there's another one coming from India. And one of the things we are seeing, and I know you're hearing this on the news, that 99% of the people that are now coming to the hospital, they're not vaccinated. And 99% of the deaths that we're having occur are people that are not vaccinated. So the vaccine may not keep you from getting it, but it may keep you from dying or going to the hospital. So again, I'd like to encourage you. I personally got the J&J &J one shot. And even though the efficacy, they said it wasn't as good as Moderna or Pfizer, those are the uh, vaccines that were made in a lab to make your body generate uh, antibodies. So I got the one shot and I got it on a Friday afternoon and it did take me down. I did have a reaction, which I was happy for because I thought maybe that meant I had antibodies. So anyway, I would like for you to call that number I put up, John, 833 422 Five, five. And that has, it's a hotline. So I just want to give you that. You can always call the California Department of Health if you live in California. And you can call the CDC. They have an 800 number. And I actually called when I had questions and they answered the phone and talked to me about uh, COVID questions that I had about how it was being reported. I felt like it was underreported in my county because a lot of the deaths were recorded wherever you died. So if you went to Shasta County or Davis or Sacramento and you died, it wasn't recorded in our county. So I started um, raising questions about that. And I do think that they're correcting that. I think they have a way of doing a zip plus four and they're notifying counties when people die out of county. I hope we're updating that so people know what the, uh, when it is in our county. We do live on the I-5 corridor. You have to remember that people do travel through here and stop at our gas stations. And one of the things John and I were talking about earlier is that we, we really did start out a campaign where not only wearing masks, people were washing their hands. And we almost got tired of everybody saying that. And we were using the squirt bottle 60% alcohol and 30% aloe vera is a good mix if you want to make your own. And it is a good idea to continue that, I think, through as we go into the flu season. You want to remember that anytime you're touching doors and going in and out of public spaces, just be sure and leave, leave that viral shedding behind. I want to talk to you about, um, we're kind of post-COVID, but we're also being careful for the future. I want to talk to you about maybe considering uh, going to the college. We have a local college here, COS, and also in Southern Oregon, you have the Southern Oregon University. And you know, you don't have to be a student wanting to get a degree. You can just do it because you're interested in something. Maybe you wanna get involved in music and take piano, or maybe you wanna be in the theater and they have different theater programs. You don't have to be the person that's on stage. When we do theater, we also need somebody to help build the stages, do the costumes, lighting, cameras. Oh, cameras! I want you to get involved in public access. So I'm hoping that we get a communications program going soon at the college, because we'd really like to get people filming the theater, filming the sports. I know right now John goes out, he volunteers. <sighs> Paris and John volunteer hundreds of hours to try and capture things that you find of interest. And then we have uh, different reporters that are doing a show each week. I think it's called Spotlight. And they're trying to take you in different parts of the county. We'd love to have other cameras. So come get involved. Think about taking TV and communication classes. Ask the college if they have one for this fall. Uh, so I'd like to talk to you about that. So. Um, about uh, COVID, what else I wanted to say about COVID? Um, is this about COVID? So it was. It said something interesting. Oh, continuing education, which is why I wanted to suggest. You know, if you do want to take classes and you're serious about it, you can get a grant to take classes, and you can just do it to better yourself. I think it's called the Pell Grant. So some of you that have stayed home because you have kids, just. 
kind of snoop and check out the college classes. You might find something you're interested in um, because we have such a wide variety. So the other thing, I know that my time is uh, less than 10 minutes. Uh, I want to talk to you really quickly. The um, AARP, I can't find the cover for you, but they did have some good suggestions about uh, saving money. So I'm just going to give you a few quick ones that I circled when I read through here. And the reason I want to talk about this, it says, be a takeout wizard. It says, skip beverages. One of the secrets about takeout, don't do beverages. You're going to go home, have your beverage. Why pay a restaurant price for a beverage when you can just have pour it at your house? So cheaper and healthier. Um, best is to just have filtered tap water. But I want to remind you to support Main Street. Um, during this COVID lockdown, not only did a lot of businesses not get business, but Main Street really was affected when we had the smoke because of the fires. We all kind of got, I got again, I want to say, burned out because of all the smoke. So Main Street really took a hit from our local pedestrian traffic and our local visitors and people that would come up from Reading to eat. So I think all of us need to support our local Main Street restaurants and order out once a week at least and spoil yourself. Okay, also to save money, go ahead and look at those grocery flyers. Another reason to get the paper, because you get the flyers in South County for Ray's. And if you'd like to know what's on sale at Rayleigh's, you want to watch for the Siskiyou Daily News. Now, if any of the newspaper racks are empty, you can always go by the newspaper office, North Mount Shasta Boulevard, uh, up across from the tire shop. You'll see the newspaper has all the newspapers out front, and they keep those boxes stocked. So if you want a Super Saver, a North County newspaper, or a South County paper, that's where you get your grocery flyers. Uh, also, you know, if you're thinking of flying, if you are thinking of flying, if you book your flights on a Sunday, you'll get better prices and always fly from the hubs. Drive a little farther and you can maybe just take a single flight. What do you call it? Where it doesn't have a layover. Uh, so the other thing is ask locals where to eat. Now, I always tell people, be a tourist in your own town. There's so many wonderful things to do here. Go by your chamber of commerce. I don't care where you live. I don't know where you're hearing me from, but go to the local chamber of commerce and get the recent flyers that tell you where the local hikes are and get your kids up and away from computers. Oh, that reminds me to tell everybody to stand up straight. We all spend so much time with our social media. And we are all kind of starting to curl a little. We're going to have a curled population. So I'd like to invite you to find a corner in your room or a door jam or a door and put your back up against it. And you will see as you do that we are really starting to kind of curl up because we're spending so much time with our focus here. So I want to remind you to take your kids, pack a sandwich that you're going to eat anyway, load them up in the car and go for a little hike. We have a wonderful little hike around the city park, across from the fish hatchery. Don't forget to visit the fish hatchery. I didn't bring a brochure. but And get out, walk, run. Just get up and get out of your chair. So um, shop beyond Amazon. You need to be looking for things you've gotten in the habit of using Amazon. Uh, I know with Costco, people tend to just... Uh, fill the box so that they don't have to pay postage. Uh, Target, uh, some of your different Walmart, uh, different places also have shopping online so that you can order it and have it come to your house. As we get into the flu season, um, I think we're going to be looking at more people will be shopping. I want people to use a calendar. Um, I think it's really important to just have a place in the house where everybody shares one calendar and you all put down what it is you have to go and do because we kind of get confused when everybody has it on their own phone. So I think central, as we get into wrapping up the summer and school, getting ready for school and homeschooling, let's all have a calendar. Okay, because I talked about burned out about masks and everybody's burned out about being sequestered and I want to talk to you about fire. So we've had a lot of trouble with smoke. And, oh, John, we have the map. Can we put up the map about how the fire came around Mount Shasta? And I want to talk about fire a little bit because we're all kind of burned out on we had to have a few people be evacuated and people had to pack up and go. 
And you know, it, it is really important to remember what to take with you. And also you have to think about your pets. One of the things getting prepared means you want to have about five day bag of kibble just in case you have to grab your pet and get in the car. Um, you need to be prepared. Um, we may be having more evacuations. Fire season's just started, but we have got to say, so see this fire map. Thank you, John. Let me see, I need to move out of the way. Uh, you can see how the fire came around the Mount Shasta Mountain towards Mount Shasta, but they were able to protect the cities. And then you can see how this went around and went up into the Vista area. I can't quite get my finger on it. And that's the area where, John, I do want to mention this. Do we have a picture of the chemicals up in that uh, corner that's over here? It's hard to do. There is some pot farms. And one of the things when the police went in and they were evacuating, they took a picture of one of these sheds and it was full of chemicals. Yeah, I wanted to show that to people. This is what's concerning about the pop farms. Um, I do know that there may be some legal grow operations, but there may be some illegal. That's not my issue. My issue isn't here about um, the fire came close and then we became aware of how many chemicals that they used to grow the pot. And John was saying that's in the pot. But my point is it can get into the water table. And had the fire gone there, not only would those have burned up, they would have gotten into the smoke and air and possibly breathing particles that people have. But um, back to the fire, thanks for showing that. That's the kind of smoke. And I'm not sure if that's a cumulus, py pyrocumulus cloud. Uh, what are they? They're, um, that's when the weather is affected by fire. And one of the reasons, it, it's the behavior uh, of the fire, let's see, when they see pyro, da, 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 they, there are, okay, there's an article in the paper about uh, knowing your sayings about uh, the lingo for the fires. That was in one of the papers. If you wanna go back to Wednesday, July 7th, there's a good article about fighting the fires. I took this picture, thanks John. And I always try and get a picture of these helicopters in front of the mountain because they take off out of the Mott Airport. And I'm always here, the, I'm like radar. I hear the, the, the chopper starting up to warm up. I'm down to two minutes. And I run up there and take a picture. But I, you know, just make sure you're ready. And the other thing is your car might get stopped on the freeway a little bit. So put a few bottles of water and a few snacks and uh, maybe a newspaper in the car to read in case you should get stopped. I also got these pictures up at the airport. They had the fueling trucks come in. And what can you do to prepare, pre prepare for a fire? You need to know your evacuation routes. Hopefully at my next um, time I record, I can submit to you, or maybe for the spotlight show, I can submit some maps that have some yellow highlights. Because I think we all need to know what roads are available for us to get out. I think um, right now there's some concern about the Azalea overcrossing, and they've agreed to make sure there's always a lane on the Azalea overcrossing while they're working on it. It's across the freeway, and it's been slowing down traffic. But the neighbors there were concerned that if Highway 89 got closed, they need that way out to come over and use South Old Stage. Or the people in Cantera, if South Old Stage is blocked, they need to be able to come across the freeway and get to 89. So I want you to know that your local firefighters are all meeting and trying to correct that. So I didn't have time for my helpful hints from Eloise, but um, I did have something fun to share. I found this, my girlfriend Kobe sent me this. Somebody made a postcard of one of my signs. When you leave Manfredi's, there's a telephone pole, and I looked at it yesterday, I have to go down with a paintbrush and touch it up. But it says, enjoy our town 25 miles an hour, welcome traveler off the beaten path, Drive a little slower, you'll get there at last. So anyway, somebody did that. They made a postcard of my sign. I thought that was fun. Thank you very much. Um, so I think my time is up. The signs just dropped. Thank you for joining me. My name is Therese Swenson. I'm here in Weed, California, and I'm doing shows for public access. My show here is called These Times, and uh, in Southern Oregon, my show is called Tough Times. So remember to look up public access, like to have you get involved, but we have a lot of great shows and we're accumulating producers now here. We need more, we need you to get involved. So think about what you wanna share with us, hobbies, uh, maybe you're a teacher and you have a good uh, class that you did, give us a few uh, point pointers. 
Anyway, thanks for joining me, Tress Swenson. I love this music, Sing for the Climate, because we really are all experiencing it across the nation, all of the different devastating weather catastrophes. And it, we really need to start thinking about